the most important thing is the connecting with sunshine um, mm -hmm. because it's non-negotiable for you non-negotiable you have to get it. it it starts it it just it restarts your body it's yeah. it's really cool how it works i uh, when i when i made the intent to start doing that after about four or five days i really noticed a difference um so that, that's that, that was just a, a what i really wanted to emphasize for people that's mm -hmm. a big piece of it let's learn how our next guest gets up dress up and show up on purpose enjoy the episode Hello, morning enthusiasts. Welcome to the Best Morning Routine Ever podcast. I am your host, Dr. Lunid, and today I have the honor of introducing a very special guest to the show, Jay Hall. So he has been involved with several startups, having sold a few, having failed in a few, and he's currently having a corporation that holds multiple trademarks. And so he is going to tell you about his unconventional um, journey. Um, his way of getting where he is now and talk about the, the success and growth of businesses also um, towards the end, his morning routine. So with no further ado, Jay, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Uh, now we can talk about failing forward, but we know the life of an entrepreneurship, it's not easy. And so let's talk about um, your journey and you know, kind of like your passion to, to, to starting these these startups right businesses yeah um cole's noticing my story has always been one of my biggest challenges this year and last year uh trying to sum it all up in a very succinct package uh started out as a dj when i was in my teens uh evolved into event promotion owned a mm -hmm. record label went back into event promotion worked in politics behind the scenes for 10 years uh, working on everything from small mayoral campaigns up to a presidential campaign in the U.S. and several wow. uh, federal campaigns in Canada. Um, and uh, that evolved into nightclubs and events, which evolved into a marketing agency, which then leads to where I am today, running an event management and ticketing platform called Ticket Tote. Oh, okay. So that's always been in the back end. So from DJ, it's always been um, event and marketing and kind of like media um yeah that marketing and i've always i've had an interest in development i'm a developer but not a very i'm not a it's not my main area of focus so my developers that work for me are superior to my development skills in every way um but development business and events is kind of that's where my strong suit is so i merged them all together into this one gigantic project Mm -hmm. And um, having several startups, we know failure is an, an inevitable. Tell us about um, how you failed in the good way, in the good sense. <laughs> you know, um, they do say there's no success without failure. Uh, and I think that's largely because of, a, I'm not saying that I'm egotistical. I'm saying everybody's got a little bit of ego in them and everybody thinks they get an idea. I, I know this has been with me and many people I've spoken to or spoken with or, or you know, uh, when I've spoken at conferences um, and they've said to me, I had this great idea and boy, I could not see past the fact that I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> and yeah. it's because, you know, I, I've, COVID was definitely a big contributor to this, but I was, 2016, I, I broke my back and I was paralyzed. And I didn't have a lot of options for what I could do with my time. So uh, a friend had challenged me on what is now the, one of the most controversial subjects on the planet is uh, whether vaccines are good or bad. So I spent 16 months pretty much just that's all I learned about. Um, and it really taught me the value of learning in a way that I'd never learned before. Mm -hmm. In school, I was a mediocre student. Uh, in business school, I did great, but in, in, in high school and grade school, they pushed me through just to get me out of there. And, <laughs> um, and I really looked at that whole experience and then what I do now, and I start everything with learning. Everything I failed, I started with an idea and everything I succeeded, I started with learning. So that's mm. kind of how I, how I look at failure and success now. Hmm. Everything that you succeeded, you started with learning. Everything that failed, it was an idea. 
So what you're saying is the importance of, of learning along the way, learning through the process, learning through the journey. Yeah, the, the learning. So you can have, a, I have all these ideas all the time. I'm sure everybody does, you know, especially We're tripping over lines. them as entrepreneurs. Oh, yeah. oh, tripping they're, all, over they're everywhere. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I found one in my fridge one time. So it was a, a, a sticky note that was in my fridge. I, I couldn't even decipher it. I, I found it like six months later and it was some idea for business. But um, I think we all have a lot of ideas and trying to figure out which ones to, to, to actually activate are, is, a, is a huge challenge. So I go and I learn about subjects that interest me and that will generally trigger an idea or bring an idea full circle as opposed to what I did in the past when I did fail was I had an idea and I said, I'm going to do this no matter what. You know, and I've had lots of ideas that I've started to learn and I say, mm, no, thank God I learned because uh, that would not have worked out well for me. Yeah. And so the learning process, are we talking about doing market research or we're just going theory, theory wise and learning about how you're going to present it, how you're going to message it? Because you're in the, that's marketing is like your realm, right? Um, yes. How you can understand it yourself to be able to explain it to others with ease. Finding the problem, like, uh, let's talk about, let's, I am fascinated with this learning aspect of it. Yeah, so I, um, I, you know, it's funny, I'm on TikTok, and I do entrepreneurial content on TikTok, and the number one thing I get fight back from young entrepreneurs on, you know, we're talking, you know, 16 to 25, is I don't want to write a business plan, I don't, I don't feel like I need one, and I've always, my staff are so sick of hearing this, but I say luck is not a plan. And a lot, and if you don't have a plan, you're going to rely on luck. Um, mm -hmm. So I teach my, I, I take my learning the same way I write a business plan. And that is I break it up into pieces and then I learn each piece. And if each piece is satisfied in my head after I've gone through and I've learned through, you know, listening to experts in the field, listening to people that have been there before me, uh, researching the industry, looking into market research, looking into marketability factors, you know, all of that built into a, a, a very long learning process, which a lot of people don't want to do, right? But, you know, instant gratification these days. Yeah. Um, I feel like the reason why in the last few years I've experienced more success than ever is because I take that long road of learning. And sometimes it can be detrimental, actually, because you got to jump on things quickly. Mm -hmm. But those are the things I, I, I've said to people that have events on my website, you know, and I say to them, so what's your plan for the, the I don't really have one. I'm like, oh, OK, so I see I see what kind of client. So this is how much I'm going to be billing you because I know that we're going to have a lot of extra work to do. Whereas the people that come in with a plan, they barely even interact with us. They get on our site, they do what they need to do and they're out. Um, so. I think the, the, the really quick ideas are generally going to be quick money in and, and probably start to stumble somewhere down. That's why you see these guys that are on TikTok that say, I made $3 million in 45 seconds, and then they disappear. The only thing they post about generally is their vacations and things. And it's not because they're so rich, they're vacationing all the time. It's because the businesses, and I've talked to several of them, they, they're not long-term. Um, mm. So if, you, if you're going to start with learning, you probably have to get ready for long term. If you're trying to make cash quick, I don't even know if that's really being a business person. Uh, that's more being a salesperson to trying to sell the, 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 not the snake oil, but we'll call it the various kinds of oils uh, as quickly mm -hmm. as you can. So. Okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. The learning aspect being it for the long term, long haul. Now, I know you mentioned TikTok and that's one of the newest ways of a platform the newest platforms that you can actually market yourself on so let, let's talk about the the ever-changing climate of um <laughs> advertisement right so what are some of the do's and don'ts uh in the current especially this current um economic climate well uh i would say any business that can get the buy-in from the people involved including customers clients staff you know, partners, yeah, everybody get them involved in, in the content. That's going to be the way you win the battle. Now, you know, I have, I have on the marketing side. So sync digital solutions is my marketing company. And then I have an it arm that do, we deal with experimental AI and we're doing a lot of coding on ticket tote caption crusher, various other projects. Um, and the one thing that I find is critical 
And even clients that they see this and then they go back to their old ways of just standard pushing out advertisements, organic works. Uh, you know, one of the best, one of the best, actually I have it on my desk right here, is Boost Oxygen. So they were funded on Shark Tank, but I didn't, and I'm a big Shark Tank fan, but I completely forgot they existed. And then I started to see their organic content. You know, people climbing up mountains and using it to get that extra burst. People in the gym working out, using it to get the extra burst. So I decided to use it and it works like a charm. So I use it all the time. And I made some content and they're very quick to message you say, hey, can we use this video? Um, so they, they've done that with me three or four times and they kick me back, cans of boost and they make money off of it. And I think organic, if anybody's gonna do anything right now, they have to think, how can I get that buy-in and go organic as I possibly can? Going organic. So in what you just described, what we're talking about, um, what is it? So being organic and also using your network, your influencers per se, to, to help yeah. push the, the product out um, to, to get noticed. Yeah, but it's got to be natural. You know, I, I think people forgot when social media got big that about the word social. They're really focused on the media side, but they're not focused on the social side. Mm -hmm. How many brands do you go to and you, you, they have an interesting post and you, you comment and you get nothing back? Or you just get a like back. You don't get a, you don't, they don't reply to you. They don't DM you afterwards. That, that should be an absolute grounds for firing in, in this climate, I think, uh, for a marketer. <laughs> you, 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 sh you have to put out great content that has a sales message to it, but it naturally flows into it. Um, like with this boost stuff, right? You know, they, I, I did a video in a gym in Vegas and I was exhausted. I'd been, I'd been flying all over the place, driving everywhere. I hadn't slept in days. I want to get one gym, good workout in because of the days of eating junk food on the road and everything. So I got my good, but I started to stumble halfway through the workout. So I hit my boost and I was doing it while I was doing an Instagram live. And it, people were like, holy crap, you're completely different five minutes later. And that's what they use. And see, that's a sales message, but it's, it's a natural marketing message. It's part of the conversation. So I think the social is absolutely a piece people forget that they have to start remembering. Yeah. When did we lose that? You know, as, as simple as you, you, you put it as innocent that it is, when do we lose that aspect of just organically doing things and when it becomes a sales, you think we, we learned too much. We overdid it, right. That we, <laughs> we got, we had to think of tactics and how to do the branding, the messages that it doesn't come naturally anymore. It doesn't flow. It's like, it's like a big headache just trying to get your message out these days. When did we lose that? I blame Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> 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 and it's funny because it's, you know, when you're confront, I've, I've met, I met him once. I, I used to go to yeah. Facebook all the time uh, for pre pandemic for marketing, um, you know, cause I was an agent, I was an agency that was part of the partner program. And I knew a lot of people at Facebook and uh, I, and I did, I, I said to people, not to him directly, because I only had a few, only a very short time with him, but uh, I said to people, his VPs and everything, I said, I blame Mark for what's happened because <laughs> what ended up, what, what Facebook started as and what Facebook is today are two completely different yeah, platforms. Right. Mm -hmm. And why they would ever think that they could retain the same users from before while going into a complete, they, they, <laughs> Digital marketing and social media should have been the new frontier for marketing in a, in a very cohesive way with very clear messaging, but it became an ads platform, just like TV, just like newspaper, just like radio. Yeah. And I buy premium subscriptions to everything just because I'm so annoyed with the ads. I won't even play games on my phone anymore if they, if they don't give me a, a subscription that gets rid of the ads. Um, so I think that that's, and, and Facebook definitely led the way on that. The, the big difference between Facebook and MySpace was the fact that MySpace could not figure out how to get ads working properly. You're flooded with ads for Viagra and stuff like that when you were like a 15 year old kid and uh, Facebook figured it out. And then they leaned so heavily into it. And then it became all about the public price, the, the, the stock price, right? And now it's not about satisfying the users anymore. It's about satisfying the, the, the shareholders. And that was started by Mark. That was started by Facebook. It continues on. We look at the debacle of Twitter right now. Same thing. Um, 
I think there's just this huge disconnect and everybody's treating social, or not everybody, but a lot of people are treating social media like a newspaper, like a, right. like a, you know, a radio ad. And that's kind of the message that these owners have put out. So it's that they, they've really shot themselves in the foot, I think. And so we got to go back to the basic, right? Just um, learn how to connect with our audience um, as yes. entrepreneurs, know how to organically put the message in there. And the posting is important. The messaging is important. So I feel like we're working backwards. You know, we, 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 we went in, we learned so much. Now it's like, go back to the basics, go back to the foundation. So let's talk about the top five ways to get noticed online to get um, clients besides, you know, the, we, t- we tapped into it a little bit about the audience, getting buy-in from the audience and organically reaching them. What are some other ways? Okay, so number one thing, overarching over everything, be sincere and genuine. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I actually just launched uh, a new marketing campaign for our ticketing site, and it's it's aimed at nightclub owners. And the messaging is, I was a nightclub owner, you're a nightclub owner. I understand where you're coming from and why, you know, all the challenges that come with it. And I started this for us. This project is to address all the concerns with guest lists and VIP systems that exist in nightclubs that for decades have driven us all up the wall. Um, yeah. You know, instead of here is my guest list and here is the here are the 12 features you can get from it. You know, I, I, I don't think that that's very effective in an online space. And especially since you have such, you know, you got just this micro amount of time to get somebody's attention. Sincerity and genuine will, will your messaging should be that. Um, number two uh, is to involve others in your brands, uh, other brands in your brands, influencers, just get others involved. Doesn't really matter how you do it or who it is. Um, I had a, a Halloween event I sold last year that I did for five years. Um, and it was, we were terrifying. We were the most extreme experience for Halloween you could find in Canada. And I made sure to involve anybody that came out of my experience laughing or crying. Anybody that came out of it, it was like, eh, well, whatever, you know, it, it didn't really scare me because they're tough guys. It's like, okay, I push them aside. But these people, I immediately, as soon as they came out of the experience, there was a camera. So what do you think? And they're bawling their eyes out, their makeup's going down their face. They got fake blood all over them. They get, these people are crying. They can barely even keep their, keep their feet. So, you know, a loud sound hits from behind. They crumble because their legs are mush. Um, you know, things like that, that you get your customer, everybody involved uh, in your marketing, but make sure that you're pulling, this is the crux to it, pulling their content in. So instead of use user generated content to its advantage, because you posting somebody else is not as effective as sharing what they posted about you. So that would be my second thing. Um, my third thing is don't overcomplicate it. Like you're saying back to basics and fundamentals. Mm-hmm. You don't need a hundred thousand dollar website. If you're selling, you know, two products and booking appointments for your hair salon, keep it so simple because if you, if you try to be something you're not, when they come to the real world experience, they're getting, they're going to get something entirely different, you know? And I think a lot of people, a lot of brands are, are faking it, you know, kind of online. Um, and, uh, and then when they have a disconnect from the real, so that will connect, we'll say to the next tip is do not create this false sense online. And then when people come to you in real life, they get something entirely different, be online who you are in the real world. I think that's critical. And then we got what's one more, one more would be do not do too much online in terms of don't join every network. Join the networks that you have a plan for. You know, uh, I have a, a very particular plan for TikTok versus my very particular plan for LinkedIn versus Facebook. Um, right. I, I generally as a brand, I say, I don't know how important it is for a company to have uh, a, uh, a TikTok as it is for the people in the company to have TikToks talking about the company. I see. And that, that brings me to my next question. Do we need to have all the platforms? And then I think you alluded to that. The come the, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. There's too many. There's, you know, it's, I was really hoping that by now social media would niche down, you know, Facebook. I, I read somewhere today that Facebook had last quarter had 3 billion people. That's half the world. Why do you need <laughs> half the world? You know, like it's, it's too big. You can't, there's no way to satisfy everybody. 
you know? And uh, I mean, we look at American elections as the best example. 50% of the people love and 50% of the people hate everything that happens, right? Yeah. So if you got half the world on your platform, chances are half of a quarter of the world hates what you're doing. Whereas if you niche down and you're focusing in on particular topics, you know, for example, um, if you had a network for uh, hairstylists and people that are all about hair, you know, you, you maybe you build up a community of two, three million people, but it's a two to three million, it's two to three million people that are engaged, interested in the topic. They know what they're going there for, but you go to Facebook and you're like, what am I even doing here <laughs> at this point, you know? And, and LinkedIn has become, you know, it used to be, used to be LinkedIn followed the office, no politics, no religion, no, no like personal drama, right? Now I go on LinkedIn and I'm like, do I have to look at another person's post about all the drama that's going on in their lives and posting political stuff? And I don't, that's not the stuff that matters to business, you know? So I, I just, you're right. We don't need all those platforms. I think we need more niche platforms though. So I'd be okay with more platforms that niche down than more gigantic trying to appease everybody kind of platforms. And it's, I think it's up to the business owner to know who your, you know, avatar, who your audience is and find out where they hang out and just kind of stay there, hang, um, focus there um, to reach them. Uh, yeah, more. that that can be a little tricky too, because instinctively, if I say to somebody who's over the age of 35, uh, you should be on TikTok and here's why. And they say, no, I heard it's for kids, you know, and you go, well, Here's the thing. The adults that are on there are engaged. I mean, they are, their engagement rates are through the roof and they all got on there because they wanted to know what this platform was that they're all their kids were on. And it turned into a really, I, I mean, I reach, I get more messages and more interaction on TikTok from business people than I do on LinkedIn right now. That's, yeah. I thought it was weird in the beginning, but they're going there because the algorithm is so good. So if you start watching a bunch of business content, your feed is going to be all business content, right? So mine's mm -hmm. mine's business content and 90s wrestling. That's what my whole feed is all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so let's talk about the clients that you do get. How do you make their lives easier um, with what you do? So I think as a, as a marketing IT firm, the best way to do it is to connect them with the right technology and to teach them how to use the technology. Um, so we, we have a very different mandate than we did, you know, we'll say four or five years ago, our mandate four or five years ago, let's do everything for everybody. You know, let's mm -hmm. make all their posts. Let's drive, let's do all their blogs. Let's do all their email marketing campaigns. Let's produce all their videos. And then I, I sat back and said, God, we're, we're, we're doing so much work and these people aren't learning a thing. So then when they go and they, you know, let's say they say, okay, well, we see the success. Then they go off. They always come back right? Because they're like, oh, we didn't realize how much you guys did. So I said, well, that's not really a recipe for success because I don't want to be doing this forever. I, I want to travel and write and, you know, live on beaches. So I, we're really trying to connect the right tools and teach people how to use those tools. You know, for example, people like chat GPT, half the world thinks it's terrible and it's going to ruin the, ruin the world, cost everybody their jobs. And half the people are like, they're really curious about it, but they don't really know how to use it. And it's a really hard tool to learn to use properly. Um, so, you know, that's that's my current mission right now, teaching people to use chat GPT properly. Okay, yeah. And, and knowing how to, to niche down uh, and know how to use those resources, those tools. There's so many tools, <laughs> so many different tools out there. Oh, <laughs> Aim yes. to make our I life have... easier, <laughs> but yeah, counterintuitive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it's... The internet was supposed to make our lives easier in some ways it did but then it gave us a whole bunch of other work yeah so i don't know how much you know it's kind of like a catch-22 you know mm -hmm. I, the internet's a yeah, weird place I, I know so tell us about um some of the habits you have to put in place to ensure that you're successful and can show up for the clients you serve right so how do you get up dress up and show up well my morning routine is so critical to me it's been thrown off a little bit lately because i've been working 10 a.m. till 3 p.m. and then 5 p.m. till 1 a.m. every day okay. uh, for the last month. And I'll be doing that for the next couple of months. So it's thrown off slightly. But today, today is a great example. Today, I managed to get it all in before I came to work and I feel amazing. So 
Um, Maybe because you were coming morning. on the best morning routine at the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like, I better live it again, right? Like, yeah. I, it, it, it'd been a few days. I was really get there was no ga- no no gas in my tank for a few days. So, um, but today I woke up feeling really good. Uh, the first thing I do is I get ten minutes of sunshine, regardless of whether it's through my window on my balcony. I live in Winnipeg, so there's lots of snow. Um, so sometimes you don't want to go outside, uh, but ten minutes of sunshine immediately when I wake up sets my rhythm perfectly. Yeah. Then I grab my phone and I address everything that happened for the four to eight hours I was asleep. And there's usually a lot. Um, so I do that from bed, just kind of relaxing and doing it while taking my supplements, my veggie greens, my fruits, my you know different vitamins, all that. Um, and then from there, I go and I'll do uh, a workout, no more than 20 minutes ever, set my clock for 20 minutes. And at the end of 20 minutes, I'm done. Um, and then while I'm working out, I have uh, videos on uh, that are playing in the background that are educating me on something. So it's a part of my learning process throughout the day. So today it was uh, learning more about uh, some of the AI companies that are offshooting from chat GPT. Um, And then after that, I sit down and I meditate for 15 minutes and just get my head clear, figure out what my day should be like, even though I figured out my to-do list the night before, Um, I, I, a lot changes between going to bed and getting up. Uh, so, you know, really just digesting what, what I have to do to win my day. Um, and then, you know, shower, I have a quick bite to eat. And then I usually head to the office and, uh, I am with my team in a support role until about three o'clock. And then I take a break, um, and I will go about and I will, you know, do some errands or whatever I have to do, or just decompress for two hours come back to work five to one with my developers and develop some cool new products. Nice. Now you mentioned that you were, your tank was empty the last few days and then you had, you did the morning routine and it kind of kicked you back into gear. What's the benefit um, to, to doing it? Cause you don't get to do it all the time. And how do you feel? Uh, how do you show up to the rest of the day when it's not done? Well, when, when I, when I get my morning routine in, I think the reason why it works is um, I'm getting essential pieces of my environment, of relaxation, of working out, my vitamin, all this, I'm, I'm, I'm getting all that in when some days you, you, most days years ago, I never got any of that in, didn't work out, didn't get healthy, didn't take in much sunshine. The only sunshine I got was in my vehicle as I was driving to work, um, you know, and I really, I, I just, I start my day with the intent of being connected to my environment, connected to my mind in a, in a peaceful manner, and then uh, connected to my work and my, my, my mission. Um, and what I did find was until I was able to recharge, I took two days off and did nothing on the weekend. I just, I had to, because I've, I'd been going for about a month working, you know, 16, 20 hour days. Um, so I took the two days off to relax. And then I got back into my morning routine and I realized how stressed out and how quick to not anger, but quick to react. I was mm-hmm. without my morning routine. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. You're more flighty and you're more, you're taken back. You're more surprised with how when things come versus gracefully going through it and expecting it and kind of having the stamina tenacity to go through it. I agree with you hundred percent. That's, that's the power of the morning routine. It, it helps you show up better because the things, yeah, the situation, think- the, the situation doesn't change, right? The things keep still come at you. It's just the way oh, yeah. you respond to it. Yeah. And you know, when you start the day, when you start the day properly, where you, you have all these connections you make, you, you have a bit more pep in your step for the rest mm-hmm. of your day, right? And that little bit of extra energy, that little bit of extra intent, that little bit of extra happiness, it makes all the difference when life just decides to come at you throughout the day right you just have a little more peace in your heart your mind and you can just you you just you just you're more optimized i i like to say it like that you know or i run a scan we run scans on our websites every day to make sure there's no problems that's like the morning routine is like scanning you know for me it's it's really just allowing me to, to connect properly with everything around me and and for the rest of the day, I benefit from it. I more, that's why I want to do the podcast. Cause I love the fact that you've put so much emphasis on a morning routine. 
I concur. Yeah, hundred percent. It optimizes your day. It optimizes you, so you're better. Um, you're better tackling the day, and you're better to your clients, right? Um, that, that's the goal: is to be intentional, to show up um, with great intent in whatever that we do um, throughout the day. Um, tell us where can we connect with you? How can we find you? Um, well, I'm all over the place. Uh, I, on that last point, though, I just want to say the most important thing is the connecting with sunshine. Um, mm -hmm. because it non -negotiable. don't get enough. What's that? It's non-negotiable for you. Non-negotiable. You have to get it. It, it starts, it, it just, it restarts your body. It's, yeah. it's really cool how it works. I, uh, when I, when I made the intent to start doing that after about four or five days, I really noticed a difference. Um, so that, that's, that, that was just a, I really wanted to emphasize for people. That's mm -hmm. a big piece of it. Um, so on uh on TikTok, you can find me um entrepreneur so honest entrepreneur combined h-o-n on uh entrepreneur um on uh on instagram uh, you can connect with my brands either ticket tote or sync ds dot agency um and on linkedin j hall on instagram hall smash um it's a it's a boxing reference uh and uh yeah that's pretty much all the places you can find me um you projects by j is dot com is my personal website and uh, tickettote.com is my main project. That's my event marketing and event management firm. Perfect. Uh, we love quotes here at BMR. Go ahead and leave us with one of your favorites. Well, I, I'll, I'll repeat what I uh, one from earlier. Luck is not a plan, so plan to not get lucky. <laughs> love it. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. It's been a pleasure having you on the show, Jay. Uh, looking forward to this going live. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please comment and tell us what was your favorite part, your favorite habit that you are going to try out for yourself today. Comment below. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Until next time, I will see you at the top of your best morning routine ever. Stay blessed.